One, two, three, four. All right, track three from Disaster Radio's Charisma 2011. Uh, as I implied with the counting, I was sort of trying to do Ramones, like a bubblegum uh, take on having your plans for young love thwarted by the falling of a nuclear bomb uh, in various different scenarios that happen with each line of lyric. Um, yeah, strong sort of waveform, uh, fake guitar, power chords being played through sawtooth waves. Oh no, square waves. Could have fooled me. Into bit depth reduction, digital clipping, excitation, making these really crisp, harsh waveforms. Same sort of, same sort of idea on the bass line that there's a. A, uh, probably a one sixteenth delay by the sounds of it somewhere, a one eighth. Um, this kind of phasing, chunky, and then the drum tone, totally woolly, totally smashed. Repeating ride cymbal punk beat. An unused guitar track. I don't know why I didn't put guitars in there. Maybe uh, it was sort of too human to add a guitar in there, but it does fit quite nicely in the mix. Yeah, so the, the song deals with a lot of this kind of post-apocalyptic idea from what we were getting into at the time would have been... Um, Troma movies, Fallout, um, the idea of sort of nuclear waste, nuclear goo, uh, which informed the album cover. Um, I since, after this record, put down the idea of a post-apocalypse after reading a quote about uh, First Nations peoples in the US, um, in the sense that for them the apocalypse has already happened, and for huge swathes of peoples around the earth so here we are now again like electric ecstasy a, a driving vocal with a lot of words and then a a break section informed by a sound device in this case it's this uh this kind of waveform cluster which has a long LFO on it, like a slow vibrato. And this um, this melds quite nicely with the harsh waveforms of the, the bass line against the guitar. this uh these atari 2600 style um white noise sample and hold effects very nostalgic kind of very um classic sort of heavy plastic sound for me it likes very i can hear those coming out of you know my grandma's old tv that we tuned in the atari on um and using these uh, more sort of sound effects devices as as a kind of musical device, a setting device. You were wondering what to buy from the Planet Earth Memorial gift shop guy and a certain bumper sticker might have caught your eye but then they dropped the bomb, dropped the bomb, dropped the bomb, dropped the bomb. The idea that there is a memorial for Planet Earth, he's kind of just sneaking in this idea that uh, just these little ways of describing something with a setting so you can get it all in one line. Um, 
What is the next one? Yeah, we're waiting for the world to end, so we go out driving in our cars with our friends, but the Denny's is closed, so I guess it's the end. Um, I remember sitting around one night with my friends talking about what we would do as the last thing on earth, and I would be like, I go to Denny's. And the joke was that, you know, every time we'd turn up at Denny's, it would be actually closed as a 24 hour restaurant, Denny's Potterua. And then you'd be stuck and you'd have to go to some consolation place, you know, some 24 hour McDonald's or whatever. Uh, so yeah, these kind of fun scenarios where, oh no, the world's ending, let's go to Denny's one more time. Oh no, it's closed, that's right, it's always closed. Oh, and then, then spending, you know, your last moments in a kind of parking lot. Uh, and these uh, vocals, we've got a mixture of uh, vocoder and uh, distorted auto tuned vocals. So this kind of uh, this is the same thing as described in the previous track, Electric Ecstasy. That uh, we're we're bridging this world between the human voice, my human voice, and the the kind of distorted digital waveforms. Um, it's 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 trying to sort of shoehorn the, the 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 human voice into this kind of sort of more cybernetic dimension, this more sort of subjunctive. It's speaking of what could be, rather than what is. Um, it kind of frees frees up the song to speak about a lot of different things with the the timbre of the voice. <laughs> Yeah, so the same, the same sort of riff, the same sections, A, B, A, B, sort of punk form. Then we bring in the uh, power chords on the last part just to give it a kick in the butt. So a very like gaggy ending, a very like, uh, oh no, here comes the bomb. Oh, the, this one's for me. Um, and also doing this uh, trick that I learned with the micro -corg, using the vocoder, uh, going super low. So you almost get this kind of waveform sound because the waveform's so low in the modulation of the vocoder that you just almost have this kind of filtering um, sound and that will come up in a few more tracks later as well, this kind of low vocoder idea. Um, all the vocals are accentuated by this sort of pure tone. It sounds super annoying on its own, but then when you hear it all together, it just kind of melds into the vocal against it, just in that register, just to give you a little bit more guts in that, in that part of the... Um, Scale. But yeah, by and large, very repetitive. Can only really speak about the ideas of behind the song and the timbres rather than any kind of musical development. Um, yeah, there's Drop the Bomb. <laughs> 